Welcome to our very first Gorilla Art art lesson. I'm super excited to be teaching you today. We're going to be learning how to draw this castle. This is our art project for today. We've got a lot of fun things happening on here and our inspiration was Ireland. Ireland has tons of castles and I thought the rainbow seemed very St. Patrick's Day-ish. It has passed, but that was when I created it and I thought it was still fun to do. So my name is Tiffany. I own Gorilla Art Studio and I teach lots of kids at different age levels and I really love doing it. We're going to start off by talking about the supplies you're going to need. You're going to need a watercolor paper. This one has a lot of texture on, on it and you want to make sure that the texture is facing up because that's what we're going to use and draw on on the texture side. You can actually take your finger and just kind of feel it and see if you can discover the soft side and the bumpy side. You're going to need a pencil. Perhaps you'll need an eraser. You'll need a Sharpie. You're going to need all of these watercolor, excuse me, they're washable markers. And I have everything for uh, to make a rainbow. They're just um, very fun colors. Then we have oil pastels. Mine are all different kinds, doesn't really matter. If you don't have oil pastels, you can certainly use crayons, but oil pastels are going to smear a little better and you'll see in our technique later why I think oil pastels are a good choice. Um, they're one of my favorite things to work for, work with. We have a yellow, we have brown, black, red, and gray. The other thing, the last thing I think you'll need is some oil. This can be baby oil. Um, I have just canola oil in there and it's going to be a real fun technique. I'm going to show you later. And then lastly, you are going to need a brush. This one's a round tip brush, but it honestly doesn't matter too much which kind of brush. You just want to have maybe a little smaller like this one is, as opposed to a big giant one. It's hard to, you know, get it into little tiny spots. So I like this size as a good size. Okay, we'll come back. Um, grab yourself something to drink, get your supplies ready, and let's get creating. Okay, welcome back. So we're doing the castle. And I like to start off with kind of a big, a big focal point. And in this particular picture, I think we've got our door right there that we're going to start off drawing. I kind of like to look at how big it is in relationship to the paper. It's on um, this middle section. It's kind of like if you divide it into threes, it would just be perfectly fit onto the paper. I think um, kids and adults have a lot of trouble drawing things maybe too small. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're drawing. We're going to go into what I call sketch mode. I'm going to draw maybe a tinge harder than I want you to draw. I'm drawing a little harder so that you can see it on the screen. Um, anybody who's taken my classes before, they know sketch mode is super gentle drawing. You don't want to push hard. You want to push very lightly. It's almost like ghost writing. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to draw my arch. This is going to be my door and see, you can't see it at all. So I'm going to just draw a little harder. Can you see that? Yeah. So you're doing ghost drawing. That is a perfect little um, start to our drawing. I'm going to draw the inside of it under, just underneath. Okay, so now that you've got our door on, we're going to draw in the sides of our castle. You don't have to draw a perfect line. Sometimes in sketch mode, or anytime you sketch actually, a lot of times your hand will should go back and forth very gently till you kind of get the line you like. And don't be afraid. It doesn't have to be a perfect line. You can always go back and erase it. That is why you're in sketch mode. Now, we got our sides in. 
You want to leave plenty of room so it doesn't look too tiny on the edges here. So I did them pretty close to the door. What we're going to do is we're going to do the bottom of the roof here. I'm going to draw a little harder just to make sure you guys can see it. But remember, you are in sketch mode. Now, the bottom of this roof has a slight curve to it. I'm going to show you the picture, our sample again. Slight curve. And that's to give the illusion that we've got some depth going on, that it will continue on around, give a little dimension. We're going to carry this curve on over here with curves here. We'll show you that in a second. Got our curve, our curve there. I like to imagine the middle of my paper and I draw an imaginary line. It's not real, an imaginary line straight up. And that gives me a pretty good idea what's in the middle there. And I put a dot. And then I'm going to sketch down my lines Again, I'm drawing a little harder than you should be. I'm going to have these little things right there. Okay. So we've got a nice curve. And now we're going to come over here and draw the sides of our castle. See how they curve also? Again, it just shows a really cool illusion, kind of making these look like they're cylinders that they go around, that they would continue on. So I'm going to draw the very top of those right about here with a slight curve. You don't want the curve to be too crazy, okay? It's just a very slight one. And I'm gonna have my imaginary line go across and then I'm gonna do another curve. And I'm gonna do this all the way around. It's got about an inch in between. And I would say that they are just the same curve going along all the way down. Do one more and then I'm gonna come on this side imaginary line same thing imaginary and then I press my um, pencil down imaginary boom and then one more okay so we're gonna continue on to the top here I'm gonna show you that in a second okay so what we're gonna be doing is putting lines in here I'm gonna show you this right inside them. And what that is, it's called a brick pattern. And you can see that once you get the lines in, what it looks like, it's where they're actually stones, what they're supposed to be, but they do call it a brick pattern just because of the way they lay it out. If you were to place your stones like that, it makes the strongest castle. So that's why they did it. And people still to this day continue to do that. So I like to start off with putting a line right in the middle and then on the next layer, I put a line that would be, if you had an imaginary line in the middle of that, that's where your line would start. So an imaginary line in the middle, and then it starts. And this one, imaginary, going to continue this line down. Again, same thing. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Start in the middle. And then I like to do that imaginary line imaginary and then I know okay just fast forwarding ahead I've got it completed and you can see because we've added the curves here it's given this nice illusion that there are cylinders uh, that there's depth that they might continue to continue to go around and that's what's really cool about adding that now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the little um I don't know what they call them I should look it up I'm going to say teeth because that's funny. They used to they used to have these up in castles so that the people protecting the castles could hide behind them. So I'm just going to draw them in. They look like teeth to me, so that's what I'm calling them right now. <laughs> and then what we got to do is we got to add our flags. So I'm going to draw a line right there. Maybe pull a ball there. There's my one flag. Let me draw a little ball. Oh. oh, you can tell this is a little higher, so I'm going to erase it. See, it's no big deal. 
My way, my flags do have a little wave on them. They're not straight across because that gives the illusion that the, they're flapping in the wind, which is kind of cool. Now up here, you can draw whatever you want to draw. Uh, let's show you. We've got the Gorilla Castle, or you can do this really cool, like a window. It says Gorilla Art. You choose. I did the Gorilla Art with a little window. So once you get it all drawn the way you like it, then we're going to be sharpening. Okay, so we're only going to sharpie a few things. And what that is, is it's going to be, we're going to sharpie the door. Okay, once you get all those lines, fill them in. around here as well so we're going to go ahead and do the chains you guys do all of that fill it in pretend like I did all of that then you're going to come over here and you're going to do these lines And then you'll do the letters. Okay. Also our door, I forgot to add it, but our door should have these little lines like this because it's representing wood and wood kind of has this wood grain running through it. And you don't want them to be the same. It should be a little different on each door, maybe a little farther apart, a little higher what have you fill this in so it looks good i want you to fill it in too with your sharpie sometimes i like to turn my paper instead of me turning my body i turn my paper and that helps to get a really nice angle when you're drawing especially when you do these curves i like to have it turned not perfect got those lines filled in and then I'm going to switch over to using my black oil pastel now let me tell you something the black oil pastels are super soft so you don't need to press very hard you just need to press kind of gently and it'll give you a nice line I like to use the edge it helps the line a little straighter and I want you to outline, or excuse me, trace over all of those brick lines that are there. And one thing you really do need to be careful of is you don't want to rest your hand on here because it will smear, definitely. So probably would have been smarter if I had started on this side and worked my way over. That way I'm not going across it to smear it. You can see that went down a little bit because I wasn't paying attention, but that's okay. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Fill that in. I'm going to do the little teeth. I'm also going to do this. But you know what? I think I'm going to go back to my Sharpie. I don't want to use the oil pastel on my um, flags. I'm going to use the Sharpie. And once you get that all on, I forgot a little line right here. We'll move to the next step. Okay, so the next step is we're going to be coloring in our stones with the gray. Okay, so this is the gray. And sometimes you might have to peel off the paper a little like I do. Again, these are very soft. They break very quickly. I'm just going to break it just so it's not so long. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to fill it in brick by or stone by stone. Look, I forgot to do the black there. What's happening? Stone by stone. Now, notice that I'm not coloring it in completely. I'm going to bring it up really close so you can see. 
Do you see that there's some white in there? That's really important. Don't color it in because if you do color it solid, you're going to be here all day doing it. You're going to waste your um, oil pastel. And I want to show you a really cool technique a little later that makes it blend beautifully. So I'm going to jump to the one I have here. You can pause the video now and get caught up. But what I want to show you before you pause is I've colored it in right here. I did it a little darker on the edges. Do you see how it's just a little thicker and there is plenty of white in between. Can you see all that white? Look at the door. It's not solid. I didn't press that hard. There's just a little bit of brown on it. I did go darker with my brown around the edge here. And I did do a, another little line around there of brown. I colored my red. There's still white. And then I did my yellow um, flags. Be careful not to rest your hand on it. And get it all colored in. And then start the video again and continue listening. Welcome back. So you got caught up. You got your colors on. And now we're going to do the background. I'm going to show you how pretty this background is. Look at that. I love how it's not like these stripes. They have some real movement in them and they're really pretty. And I'm going to show you how to do that a little later. But we're first going to color it in. And just like the oil pastel, you don't need to color every square inch. You just want to leave um, some white poking through. And I'm going to start off with red because we're doing a rainbow. And I like to do it at an angle. It's really important that you hold your watercolor, excuse me, your um, washable marker at an angle. Pressing, not too hard. And I'm not too worried about covering every square inch. Do you see how there's white poking through? You'll see why later that it's okay to do that. Next is orange. Careful not to do too big of sections that you run out of room. And you won't be able to complete your rainbow. It's okay if you do run out of room. It doesn't matter. Got my orange. It's definitely holding it aside. I'm not holding it up. Because if you hold it up, I'll show you in the next one. If you hold it up, you're going to get lines like that. And I really want you to use the very side of this. That yellow. Okay, green. I'm doing very long strokes, kind of imagine. You have to kind of think where that would go. Very long and very fast. It's not taking me long at all. Here's a blue. Ooh, okay. Purple. And I have this little bit left that I saved for my perfect amount. There's some coloring in there, a pink. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to finish this off. Go ahead and pause me now if you like, get caught up, and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so one thing I did forget to mention that you would need in the beginning is water and a little water bowl here. Just clean water, not very much of it, and your brush. Now this is where the magic happens, and it's like, I just love this part, because you don't have to have watercolor paint or watercolor pencils. This is just your average washable markers that you have probably been using since you were itty bitty, and it does something neat. I'm gonna dip my brush in the water. Look at that. Ooh, it's Spreading. I like to start off with my red and I just work it. Now, see, I'm running out of paint, so easy. Dip, not paint, water. Just dip my brush back in and continue on. Look at how pretty that spreads. This is such an easy project. Um, 
almost everybody's got these markers and they're not that expensive. Got to do that yellow part right there all the way down. I just love it. Look how pretty. Just makes it look really magical. See how it all blends into each other? I love this part. It's fun when I go into classrooms and I teach because a lot of the teachers haven't seen this technique. You know, unfortunately, they're on such a limited budget that they may not have watercolors. And when they see this, they think, oh, I could do that. All right. Now, so that only works on your washable markers. Okay. You're not going to be able to do that with Sharpie. You only have, they have to be washable. Now, the next thing is we're going to smear this all the oil pastel. Now it's fun to see, but it does not smear at all with water. In fact, that oil just resists it. And so we are not going to use water. We are going to use oil. You do not need very much of this. Watch how I just dip in once. And I think I'm going to start with my roof. Look at how cool that is. See how it's smearing? Now, I've taught that you can rub, use your finger to kind of smear it, and it does work really nice, but that would be a lot of work to do a whole castle. Sometimes I'll just smear it with my finger if it's just one thing. You can smear it really nice. But if you've got the oil, oops, you know what? I didn't clean my brush. Shame on me. Clean your brush in between. When you wipe it, if you're still getting red, you got to clean it again. It's going to be, you're going to have to really extra clean it because it's got oil on it. So it's going to take a little, little more times and I'll just wipe that off. It's not a big deal. So one dip in that oil is going to last you probably if I had to guess, let's see, let's see. That was one dip. I feel like I'm running out. So I'm dipping again. So it was half that area. I'm also doing it stone by stone. I'm not doing this whole thing like this because it would lose its look. You would start to smear these little black lines and you don't want to do that. Smearing it. Look how cool. I'm going to show you close up. Let me get the little tips I forgot to do. The teeth but it really gives such cool texture to it. When you have that texture, it gives that illusion that it's real. I'm gonna do this side here and go pretty fast. Imagine I did all down. Then you're gonna come over here. I like to have it darker right in these areas because that also helps give that illusion of depth. A lot of shading would probably happen there if you were just completely doing a pencil project. I'm not worrying about the Sharpie. I'm going over the Sharpie, see? Sharpie's not going to get covered up there. And then I'm going to do this. Again, I'm not worrying at all about the Sharpie. I'm just painting right on top, back and forth. I like to paint in a consistent direction, not wild and crazy. I like to go back and forth or up and down. See, look, I didn't clean my brush. Helps if you clean your brush in between. Although, you know, what's kind of cool is to have different colored ones. Cause you know, sometimes they are a little different. Maybe I'll steal some of that brown and add its places. See, happy mistake. Now the last thing, what we could have done when we were doing the colors there is we should have done actually is added the blue and this is to represent the water your moat that would go around your castle but you know a lot of times they're kind of swampy and yucky looking so I'm gonna add a little green and then I will take my water and smear this around and we have a completed castle what do you guys think I know yours is going to come out amazing and I absolutely want to see them. 
I want to see your amazing art projects, whatever you're working on. You can always find me on Instagram, Gorilla Art Studio, and tag me. Tag me, hashtag Gorilla Art Studio or hashtag Gorilla Art Castle. Go ahead, find me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you're making. This was a great video and I'm so excited to see your projects. We got a few more coming up, so make sure you check back with us and I'll see you next time. I dare you to be creative today.